All right, here we go. Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Power of Your Mind podcast. You're listening to episode number 137, number 137. I'm Victoria Gallagher, Law of Attraction hypnotist and number one best-selling author of Practical Law of Attraction, Align Yourself with the Manifesting Conditions and successfully attract your desires. I'm also the founder of hiptalk.com and hypnocloud apps, which gives you access to over 500 hypnosis recordings right in the palm of your hand. So be sure to download that app from the app stores. Today, I have a very special guest with me, David Strickle. David is a best-selling author. He has a radio show, a podcast, an online training program, and the TYA practice, which has transformed lives of people all over the world. And today, David is gonna be sharing some of his insights on channeling the stream of David and what happens during those channels. So welcome to the show, David. Thank you. I'm very, very pleased to be here, Victoria. Thanks for having me. I'm very happy to have you on the show. I've been uh, kind of following you a little bit on your uh, Facebook page and oh gosh, it's probably been a few months or maybe a little longer than that. And I I think what you do is really interesting, uh, the channeling. I've had a few channelers on the show before. And so it's, you know, um, it's always like really interesting. Sometimes I've in my meditations, I've, I've, um, I've asked for the ability <laughs> to to channel, and it hasn't come yet. So I don't know exactly how that works, but I'm um, I'm really curious. I'll be really interested to find out a little bit more about this uh, stream of David. Sure, it's something that I've actually had my entire life. I, I recall back as early as age, and I'm not sure exactly if it's five or six. Uh, my father moved out when I was six, and this was prior to that. I recall um, a friend of my parents coming over to our house, and we were sort of lower middle class um, when my parents were together. And this friend had this brand new Lincoln. And back then, Lincolns were, you know, really fancy, nice cars. They're still nice cars. But back then, it was like sort of the thing to have a Lincoln. And she drove up and it was, it was silver. It was shiny and all these little buttons and stuff. And the sunroof that I'd never seen before. It was the nicest car at that point I'd ever seen. I was already sort of a car fan very early on. I had all these little toy cars and stuff. And as she drove away, I remember my parents saying things uh, negative about her. You know, how did she get that? We'll never have that. You'll never be able to afford that sort of thing. And that, all that, that negative talk. And I remember as a young child thinking, why are you saying that? That's not true. You can have anything. Mm. And I always knew that. And moving through life, I always operated from that perspective and really operated outside of uh, how society tells us we're supposed to behave in life, basically. Thankfully for me, my father left when I was six. My mother sort of retreated to her inner world of her bedroom. And I was really left to my own devices to raise myself. And I recall uh, very distinctly at age 14, telling my older brother uh, all about what is now known as the law of attraction. I had no idea what it was called. And it was kind of funny because I remember at that time, I thought it was something that I invented. That if I imagined having things that they just came. And I also remember my brother thinking that I was nuts. <laughs> telling me to go read the Bible and pray and, and do all of that stuff that he was into. And I just knew that for me, it was true. So even though I lived at that time in a single parent minimum wage household, we were very poor, uh, I manifested material things. Because as a poor kid, when you're surrounded by people that are upper middle class that have nice things, uh, happiness is, is money and stuff. And I actually continued on that path for many years in my adult life until I was in my early 40s. Uh, I went on to manifest a lot of money and material things. I had a lot of the things that from my child perspective, I was supposed to have to be happy. And it, there's nothing wrong with any of the things that I manifested. I thought the things were nice, but there was a lot of other missing things in my life. And at that point, uh, I was seeing psychics. I was trying to really come to understand 
how I was different on the inside, even though I could build this sort of outer facade that, that fit into mainstream society. I had this inner knowing about things that I couldn't explain. I didn't know what it was. And religion didn't work for me. Mainstream spirituality didn't really work for me. And so my answer was go see psychics. And I finally went to see a psychic who told me that I was a channel. And she was just so tuned in and she knew so many things about me. And she knew things about me that I didn't know that I later confirmed as true, which was really cool. It was the first psychic experience I'd ever had like that, uh, even though I'd had several others that were interesting. And she told me that I was a channel and that I needed to pay attention to this, this uh, person called Abraham. Mm. And you've probably heard of Abraham Hicks, I'm sure. Yeah. You've heard of mm -hmm. And I remember her pulling out this plastic binder and it said Abraham across the front and it looked kind of religious and Abraham sounded like the Old Testament of the Bible to me. And I remember thinking, that's all religion stuff. I don't want any part of that. I'm going to go on my own journey. I'm a very self-taught individual. I'm dyslexic, so I didn't do well in school. So I've always been curious. and I've always just gone out and found the knowledge that I needed to find to serve me. And that's how I was approaching this, this knowing that I had. So I, I didn't want any part of Abraham. Years later, uh, the secret book came out. Uh, I remember it, I never really watched the Oprah Winfrey show. I admire her greatly, but I just, I worked all the time during the day. So I never saw her show. And I recall being home one day and I turned it on and this episode was of The Secret. Mm -hmm. They had all the people that were involved in, in creating the book, The Secret on. And I was just so mesmerized. And I thought, wow, this thing that I call my knowing has a name and it has a following and other people know about it. And I'd read uh, Think and Grow Rich at some point. And so I kind of was piecing these uh, pieces of the puzzle together. And I really, really, really got into the law of attraction because I understood that that's what my knowing was. And I started trying to fix other areas of my life, quote unquote, using the law of attraction. And then uh, I was starting to teach this uh, in my career. I was an executive with a home furnishings company uh, at this point, I was overseeing several stores across the Western United States and Canada. And my success was in training interior designers to be commission-based salespeople to you know, sell their designs and, and make a lot of money. And I wove law of attraction into my business training. And after one of my teachings one day, this interior designer came up to me and she said, have you ever heard of Abraham? And oh, again, I told, her, <laughs> I, I told her, you know, years ago, somebody told me that I needed to pay attention to Abraham. And she says, well, you sound a lot like that. You need to pay attention to Abraham. And miraculously, she comes out not with seat, not with cassettes, but she comes out with this box set of CDs mm -hmm. that she had at her desk. She was so into Abraham. And she said, you need to take these and listen to these. And at this point, I just moved to Seattle, Washington from Florida. And I bought a house at the top of a mountain. I had this rear drive car that never made it up the hill in the snow. So I was wanting to manifest a Range Rover. Mm. And so I'm driving home that night. I've got the CDs beside me. I go to turn into my neighborhood. And I'm thinking, I'm not going to listen to this Abraham Bible stuff. <laughs> she's a nice lady. So I'm going to take her CDs, but I don't want any part of that. You know, I'm going to figure this out on my own. Pull up behind a black Range Rover right in front of me. And the personalized plate said Abraham. Oh, geez. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh no. And so oh, that's I thought, crazy. okay, that's a clear sign that I, and you can imagine how they got their Range Rover, right? So it was a clear sign that I needed to pay attention to that. So I actually went right home, uh, listened to one CD after the next. This was in the early 2000s and spent all night. It was the original Abraham teachings from 1988. And it all made so much sense to me. Oh, and wow. after that, I started uh, more of a formal spiritual practice because of the Abraham teachings. I started meditating. Uh, in 2010, I had a, a, what people call a Kundalini awakening where this energy erupts at the base of my spine. And I have this, what I call like an electrification in my body that I still have going on to this day. And that's almost 11 years ago now. And in that 11 years, I went really deep inward. I utilized the Abraham teachings. I was inspired by that. I went really, really inward and began understanding what channeling was and that I could take this knowing, these thoughts that were just in my head suddenly that were way beyond me. And I could learn to write and ultimately speak it. And unlike Esther, where it was sort of this, you know, magical experience of, of them just kind of coming through her, I actually trained myself to do it. So my story is a little different than hers. I had to learn to shift into that gear 
to step back mentally and allow them to sort of take over and flow. And I came to understand that they are not really a them. They are not a former human. They're not dead people. It, it is a stream of consciousness that I believe is flowing to all creation that everybody has on some level and, and that we're all different. Everyone has different connections to it. And I've really come to understand why that is, why some people are really connected and other people aren't, uh, why some people you know, find their paths to manifesting more joy in their lives and some people don't. This knowing has given me appreciation for all creation, including people on different paths and different belief systems. So for me, I channel the stream. It's not a human, it's not male. Uh, so I haven't given it a male name like a lot of channelers do. Uh, I just call it the stream. It's a stream of consciousness. It's, it's the intelligence that creates the entire universe that we all have some access to. I have enough access to it to where I can get real clear uh, of their perspective of non-judgment and real clear on what positive and what we call negative, what they're all about on our planet. And I have created a spiritual mindset practice based on those teachings that really work for people. It's something that people can learn and apply in their lives and increase their vibration, raise their default vibration, uh, have more source connection flowing, more clarity, more joy, and ultimately more abundance in their lives. Wow, this is amazing. I've had so many questions circulating through my head as you've been speaking and <laughs> having trouble going back and organizing them into concise questions here for you. But backing up, okay, so you had mentioned that Number one, um, you've always had this ability since you, you know, since you knew you were alive. So take me back to like what that ability is. Like what is channeling? How how would you define that for the average person who's never had that kind of an experience before? Sure. Receiving information from source is okay. intuition. Mm -hmm. And we all have moments of high vibration where our intuition flows. I, I haven't met anybody yet that says that they have had zero intuition in their lives. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is our source connection. That is it. But for some, I do believe it's more pronounced and goes a lot deeper than others. And as far as being a quote unquote channel goes, it's, it's easy to say that everyone's a channel, but I don't know that. I don't know that everyone is going to reach an ability to have that knowing drop in and speak it and write it. I think that's everybody's personal journey. If it's something that you want to explore and manifest, I see no reason why that can't be, mm -hmm. but I do not want to speak from, I, I did a podcast once uh, about everyone being a channel and then I channel in the podcast and the stream came in and said, not everyone is meant to be a channel as far as speaking it and writing it to share with other people. You're not all here on the same path. There's no one size fits all anything in our world. Mm -hmm. and we see plenty of evidence of that, right? So for me, it, it's that connection to eternal wisdom because we are all physical expressions of that. And even religion gets into that. You know, just about every spiritual teaching and religion is sort of rooted in the same thing where there is a creative power and we're all an extension of that. Well, if, if that's the case, we all have some level of connection to that. And I know that when, when I'm meditating, when I'm in high appreciation of all that is, I feel amazing in that moment. I feel invincible and I feel that connection. I know that that's source connection now. I questioned it for many years, but now I get it. I know that is source. And it's not always this supernatural, miraculous thing. You know, we all have these little you know, bits of supernatural that happen for us for sure like seeing the Range Rover with, you know, that, that was amazing. That was meant to be right. But there's a lot of little things that happen that we just kind of ignore or brush off, or it's a coincidence because our world teaches us not to pay attention to that stuff. You know, our world teaches us you're supposed to get an education and get a job and work really hard and save money and have kids. And, you know, that this is the template that we're supposed to move through, but we're seeing more and more people say, well, that's not working for everybody. So let's find a different way. Well, I believe that everything is vibrational first. That's really what I get from the stream is that everything is created via imagination first and there's a creative process. And what a lot of people lose in the law of attraction, uh, it's funny because I, I, I love the secret and I absolutely love Abraham, 
But I think that they're, they are creations for a specific audience that's ready for that message at that time. Mm -hmm. And I listen to Joe Rogan sometimes, and he talks a lot of spiritual talk and understands law of attraction. But then he, he was really critical of the book, The Secret, because in his view, it teaches people this unrealistic expectation of being able to just manifest anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a fantastic introduction to the law of attraction. And then as students, we then need to move on and find other things that work for us. And we're all continually learning. And for me, I discovered the secret. Then I discovered Abraham. And with Abraham teachings, I changed a lot of things in my life that I intentionally wanted to change. And I found that I actually, at different times in my life, have manifested money, significant weight loss. I lost uh, over 100 pounds at one point. I've gained about 20 of them back now during COVID. But um, I, I was about 300 pounds at one point. And I kept that off for a decade. Uh, so better health, uh, uh, manifested a path away from chronic back pain, whereas I was supposed to have surgery. I have never had surgery to this day. Uh, I was addicted to painkillers at one point. I got off of that. So I've overcome addiction. I've overcome uh, you know, significant weight loss. I got out of a bad relationship that was 19 years and half of it was, was shouldn't have been in it. So I've manifested in every area. So now I feel pretty successful with understanding how to bring about lasting positive change to your life. And I got to the point to where I could no longer keep it hidden and I didn't care to anymore. It's sort of like I went through this awakening process that took a few years and the last frontier for me was quitting my job and, and sharing it full time. But teaching myself to channel was simply taking what was always there, that knowing and understanding that if I'm trusting, I'm raising my vibration. Because if I'm trusting, I'm not fearing. I'm not uh, you know, judging because I'm trusting. And that's why trust, TYA, T-Y-A, stands for trust your abundance. Because trust is the most important word. Law of attraction is like gravity, as you know. It's happening all the time. We're attracting everything to ourselves, good and bad. What I really go into is teaching vibrational flow, which is all about polarity, and how polarity is intended for us to, to sort of have a high vibration and then dip down into a lower energy vibration and then back up into a high. And in that lower energy vibration, we're sort of regulating our manifestations. We're slowing down some of the things that we think we want. And if we stay down there long enough, we're creating obstacles. Right. But in Taya, we come full circle to understanding that every single obstacle in our lives, all the way back to birth, actually is there to serve our expansion, to serve a purpose. And we come to appreciate them. And then the, the end result with the Taya practice is that you learn to avoid what we call step one, which is your obstacle causing you to plummet in vibration. Oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? This is horrible, this is terrible, I'm so afraid, I'm so worried. We get away from that altogether and meet the obstacle and joy, understanding that it's our creation and that it's our creation to serve expansion. Because when we create, we expand as beings and we expand the universe via our creation. So our every single obstacle is actually there to serve, to inspire us to create something new. Yes. And so many times people look at those obstacles and they get frustrated or they get disappointed or they get anxious or they get go into doubt or fear. And you're saying basically we just need to embrace those obstacles because they are there for us to expand as a human being. Um, so that's that's wonderful. Um, I want to take a little step back because you mentioned that you had a spiritual awakening um, at some point over and it, it took you a few years. So what, how would you explain what happens during a spiritual awakening? I, the awakening process is, is something that for me, it's not an ending process. It's, it's an ongoing unfolding. And it's probably something that's really been going on my whole life. You know, we tend to think in linear time. And a lot of times I will look at my life and I will judge the, the decade of my 30s is I'm still not completely clear of what the use was of my 30s. <laughs> so I spent my 30s working really hard, amassing a lot of money and things, gaining a lot of weight, stuck in a relationship by my own accord that wasn't serving me any longer. And I'm, I'm ongoing trying to find appreciation of my 30s. To me, that's the awakening process is really finding appreciation for every aspect of your life, positive and negative, and awakening is being able to align with that source energy that's available to all of us 
and see through the eyes of source. I call it zooming out, mm. but you're not really zooming out because source is not something in the sky. Source is something that is on you know everywhere, and source is very much within us as much as it's everywhere else. And the zooming out is just zooming out to that high perspective of life of non-fear and non-judgment. So if I look back at my 30s and I don't judge it as bad, I can begin to explore how it served me. Well, my 30s teed me up for my 40s, which was extremely transformative. And I wouldn't have all these, these stories to tell of transformation if I didn't manifest you know, a, a life of an of a unfunctioning relationship and an unhealthy body and a drug addiction and all of that stuff. If I didn't manifest all of that, I wouldn't have come through it and expanded in coming through it. And I wouldn't now be able to teach it. And it seems to me like I have manifested every scenario, at least for a little bit in my life, even with this knowing that allows me to empathize with people. I, uh, I th there was a time that I had never really judged anyone else as a narcissist until I became one. I went through a little period where I got into the best shape of my life. Uh, and this wasn't long ago. And I, I was ripped. I was in the gym every day. I was ripped. I was lean. I looked great. Uh, it was the first time in my life. I really, you know, when I walked in someplace, everybody looked at me, it was kind of cool. And I was kind of getting into it and I was developing this, this, and I was in the middle of teaching what I teach right now. And I kind of developed this little, little, little vibration of narcissism just in regard to that, because it was mm -hmm. new for me. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, I actually manifested another person in my life that was a narcissist as a mirror back to me and realized how awful that was for me, how, how that self-centered energy, uh, how negative and how low vibe that actually was for me. And I thought, I never want to treat anybody like that. You know, that's never been, I, I've always wanted to be kind to other people. I don't want to treat another person the way this person is toward me. And so that relationship uh, only lasted a few weeks and now we're just acquaintances, but that served a great purpose. It came into my life to reflect back to me this path I was going down that wasn't going to serve me or anyone else. And it really showed, uh, you know, taught me a lesson in a very efficient way, actually a very quick way, because then I manifested some people into my boot camp that had been married to narcissists for years. And that gave me more empathy to really understand what was going on there, because as this really confident kind of alpha person, it was it would be easy for me as a teacher and a coach to say, well, here's how you get out of you know a relationship with a narcissist. No, I had to manifest the experience of that so that I could understand it on a deeper level. It's part of being an empath is actually living some of those experiences so that you have firsthand knowledge of what it's like on each side of it. And yes. that was very transformative for me. And that's, that's the gift of vibrational flow. My need to have that quote unquote, perfect body was not high vibration. Not, wasn't just loving myself unconditionally. It was going down into that. Well, I've got, I've got to put myself out there. If I'm going to be this coach, I'm going to teach people how to do this. I need to have these pictures of me. You can go back to my Instagram and see them. You know, I don't erase any of that stuff because it's all teaching tools. I believe the rest of my life is going to be this kind of unfolding journey of ongoing enlightenment and sharing my journey and sharing the tools that I develop is I kind of dip in and out of these things in different ways and learn to view them differently. And that's really what Taya is, is, is viewing life very differently than we're taught to view it. I think that's, I think that's so true that we go through our own internal experiences, like whatever it is that we're judging, it is something that we, have a little piece of that and then the other thing i can relate to what you went through there was a there was a time shortly after the secret came out and i really started getting involved in teaching people about the law of attraction because like you it is something that i have been in touch with um, for many many years before the secret ever came out and i was using it already this just kind of gave me an opportunity to start like really talking about it and people would know what I'm talking about. And, um, but then, the, you know, there were a lot of the naysayers and I'm thinking to myself, like, how can anybody not believe in this? I mean, it's so obvious. This is so, you know, but 
I had to go through my own little experience of it not working and, and putting my own obstacles up and feeling what it's like to be in somebody else's shoes who doesn't believe in it. It's like I couldn't seem to, like I was a different, <laughs> I had separated from that person who was so confident and believed with all my being that like, oh, you know, this is what it's like to feel like you don't really believe. And I had to figure out how to get myself out of that resistance and back into that place so that I could teach from that area of not just taking for granted that like, oh, everybody should just believe this because it is, but really going through my own personal experience. And I think that we do, we create these, especially when we're teachers, we create these experiences for ourselves first so that we can heal that same situation in others or help others, you know, inspire others to find their, their way out. And so it's really interesting. Um, a couple of questions that, that came up, um, as you're talking, so many questions kind of come through my head. Um, one of the things so earlier on number one you had mentioned that um channeling really has to do with tuning into your own intuition which we all ultimately have and i i completely subscribe to that i i totally 100 percent get that it it comes through our own intuition um the question that i have is so you mentioned that you know, the Abraham, and you mentioned a, a consciousness. And I've seen a lot of people channel. And sometimes when they when they get into channeling, they almost like take on they have it, they, they shift, they go into a, 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 a new persona, and they almost they become that energy. And, you know, so I guess the question, one of the questions I had was, does everybody channel from the same source that that chant that is doing this, or are they chan or is, are people connected connecting to different streams of consciousness? Well, I, I think anything is possible, and I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on what one person. You know, I think everyone is is kind of on their own path with channeling, and they're figuring out what it is they're tapping into, and what they're offering is is their interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. And my goal or my intention with channeling was to filter it as little as possible, mm -hmm. because I do think a lot of, of humans tap into what I call the energetic realm, which is, is comprised of all that is, and they will filter it through their, their religious upbringing. And you'll hear those words peppered in and things like that. And my goal with the stream, and one of the reasons I think it flows so freely, is that I questioned religion very early on, and I really didn't buy into it. In fact, I was asked to uh, to leave Sunday school at a very young age because I questioned too much. <clears throat> so even though I was raised in the church, I didn't. I was just there, kind of going through the motions. I I questioned and disbelieved it uh, as far as you know the, the rules and the the biblical teachings and all that. I sort of just pushed all that aside very early on, and I never got into anything else. I was never guided to get into any kind of uh, spiritual teaching, really, uh, or anything like that. So I really mm -hmm. just went inward, 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 and really wanted to, to find my own knowing within me and, and figure things out that way. And when I started sharing it, it really amped up. When I went on the podcast and then I started asking questions and I started uh, interacting with other people while channeling, things would come out that were so far beyond my imagination that I knew none of it was coming from me. And it's also not necessarily politically correct. Uh, and it, it contradicts a, a lot of things, uh, but in a, in a pretty pleasant way, because generally they're saying, we're all here creating our own bubble of reality. And if Christianity is your bubble of reality and it's serving you, then that is your bubble of reality. And it's not right or wrong. There's no, you know, they're not saying that anything isn't real. Anything is real that you imagine. So if you, if you build an inner world where any teachings that you sign on to and give power to, then if you're giving it the power, it's real for you, regardless of what it is. And early on, they said, this isn't about getting out and doing billboards and telling everyone to follow the stream. 
This is about offering something and those who are ready for it and aligned with it will appear. And that has been the case. You know, we've been sharing it now for over three years. And that has exactly been the case that the, the right people at the right time show up. It serves them. It serves their expansion. We create a Taya as a practice around those teachings. And that was something that, that I did out of my frustration with a lot of teachings that I absorb because there's so many things. If you read a book or listen to a podcast, you know, I have a podcast on a book myself, you can be inspired, but people need a system to change their vibration. Because what happens is, is, you know, you listen to the podcast, you know, I, I'm sure you have a lot of people that just binge your podcast, right? Mm -hmm. I do too. You know, you get into podcasts, you listen, it raises your vibration. This makes so much sense. It sounds so great. And then they shut off the machine and they go get into their lives and the vibration goes right back down. You know, they get into, you know, the, the battle with the argument, uh, the argument with the spouse, the, the battles at work, <laughs> uh, you know, the kids, all of these things that go on that can lower our vibration. And we sort of get into the quote unquote reality of life. And what Taya does is give you tools to operate the reality of life at a very different vibrational level where you're appreciating all of it. Where now remind me again, negative. remind me again, what does the uh, TYA stand for, Taya? The Taya, we pronounce it Taya in a sense for trust your abundance. Trust your abundance. So because what? everything for me boiled down to trust. Trust. So what exactly is the Taya practice? So there are four pillars to the Taya practice. One is forgiveness. And when we say forgiveness, we don't mean you did something bad to me and I'm going to let you off the hook and get over it. That's kind of what most people think of a forgiveness. Forgiveness mm -hmm. is you delivered something to me that I was a vibrational match to, and I'm going to fully appreciate that. Even if it's something extreme, mm -hmm. uh, I've had people go through my boot camp with very extreme circumstances, people whose children were murdered, uh, people who were abducted and, and tortured. Uh, and of course, you know, everything from there, those are the sort of the most extreme examples. But when you ask somebody that's experienced something like that, if they're ready to find appreciation for it and they recoil, well, they're probably not ready to dive into that. You know, you've got to take them through some other processes to get them there. But the true deliverance from all of that stuff is appreciation of it. Mm -hmm. In fact, the woman whose child was murdered, when she found appreciation for his journey, even the ending of his life, her relationship with him and his now state completely transformed her, what are her testimonial is one of the best that we've had because she just says it's so different now that she's no longer the victim she's no longer the victim's mother she's no longer fighting against she's just appreciating life's journey and and his he and his now state and everything that transpired around that and it it, it brings her peace and ultimately gives her more joy and raises her vibration so the, the trust component of that is, is very, very important. Forgiveness is where it all starts because we all have what I call transgressor energy. And this is where our teachings sort of depart from Abraham a little bit. Uh, Abraham is very much about uh, focus on what you want and you're going to get what you want. Focus on joy. Don't worry about everything that happened in the past. And that's true. And for a lot of people, I'm sure that works great. Abraham has a huge following and it's very well served. But for some of us, we had transgressors in our past. Because I tried to just be happy and just focus on what I wanted, but I had all this baggage. You mm -hmm. know, my mother didn't love me. My mother told me she wished I was never born. My father left when I was six. Mm -hmm. I was told I was useless and worthless and unwanted and all that stuff. That left a mark on me, mm -hmm. you know, and throughout my 30s, that 300 pound mark on me, right? So yeah. I had to go and find appreciation for all of that. I had to find appreciation for my mother and my father and the way I was raised and the fact that I'm gay and all that stuff and finding appreciation for all of that released all of that transgressor energy so that when, when polarity takes my vibration down as it does for all of us, I'm not triggered by any of that anymore. My mother is not a trigger for me anymore. My father's not a trigger for me anymore. I can appreciate my father's still alive. I appreciate him as he is. You know, I set up a Zoom with him on his 80th birthday thinking, oh, that'll be nice to Zoom with him since we can't meet in person. He was bored in 19 minutes and wanted to go. <laughs> I got oh. his whole family on Zoom. I'm just like, this is who he is. You know, it's okay. Yeah. It's who he is. You tell that story to other people like, oh my God, you know. Oh. So, you know, finding appreciation for people as they are and yeah. really finding it, not glossing over it and being cheerful and saying it's okay when it's not. You got to dig down deep and find real appreciation. That detunes your transgressor energy. Mm -hmm. And so we work in the tie-up practice 
to continually detune transgressor energy. And there are things that you detune and they are detuned. We say detune and not eradicate because things could always creep back up. So we're always kind of checking in on this stuff. But right, they're time, there, the pathway to it is just not as strong. Right, right, right. We're, we're viewing it very differently so that it's no longer a trigger and it's no longer considered negative, but it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. We're not pretending like it didn't happen. We're not rewriting history at all. We're viewing it very differently in, in, in a more powerful perspective rather than a victim perspective. Uh, the next thing is, is understanding polarity, that polarity is where astrology teachings are, are absolutely rooted. You know, there is polarity and this vibrational flow that comes through that creates this sort of high vibration to low vibration. And astrology is essentially rooted in that. But our life experiences and our focus also impact our polarity. We can have a pretty high vibration, but if we have transgressor energy, boom, we can be triggered down by something. So both of those things sort of work together for us to understand this vibrational flow that comes through our lives. Uh, the next thing is source connection. Uh, source connection is all about allowing your natural source connection to be realized, meaning source, God, inner being, whatever you want to call it. To me, it's all the same. It's always there. It's always owned. It's always available. We drown it out. When we lower our vibration below neutral, we are drowning it out because when we go below neutral down into what we call lower or negative vibration, we're disconnecting from that energy. When we have, when we are less than loving ourselves because you know that energy is love. We all feel it. We all feel that mm -hmm. angelic love energy. And that is source connection. That's where our intuition flows in. But when we are hating ourselves, judging ourselves, judging other people, uh, you know, if we're envious, we're doubtful, we're fearful, all those negative emotions, we're cutting ourselves off from that. And what I found in my teaching is that a lot of people think they're up in positive territory when they're really not. They're, they're in, a lot of times we spend our lives in what I call get it done mode. Mm. Got to get to work, got to answer the emails, got to pay bills, got to get the house clean, got to get everybody fed, got to get right. work done. They're just on automatic hustle. pilot. Yeah, you're on autopilot for a large chunk of the day. And when you do your, you know, if you have a morning meditation or a ritual and you're raising your vibration, that's great. But then as soon as you get in your car, <laughs> your vibration plummets. And I, know, I used to live in downtown San Francisco and I had to drive. And San Francisco is not always a fun place to drive because there's a lot of traffic. And I was getting into my car in the morning, doing all this work to raise my vibration. The second I hit traffic, boom, I was plummeting. And when I finally learned to appreciate the traffic and appreciate the congestion and, you know, find appreciation for it, it detuned all of it. And I'm serious. It got better. I would find ways around just naturally when I wasn't always weaving and in a hurry and pressed for time when I just kind of relaxed and listened to the radio and enjoyed my drive and just appreciated my car and the weather and the beautiful, you know, whatever was around just me. Just being with that, being yeah. in the moment, being it present. transformed the whole experience. And I always ended up where I was going on time anyway. I'm type A, I was always on time. So, <laughs> you know, having to detune that type A nature, uh, you know, that's all fear-based too a lot of times. So mm -hmm. those three things, polarity, source, and what we call forgiveness. If you get those three things working in conjunction as your way of life, and then you add intention to that, mm. that's the fourth pillar. Those four things working together are very transformative. And, and we, I teach Taya everywhere all the time. The boot camp that I have is all about taking that and spending 12 weeks and making it your new habit of thought so that your lifestyle is Taya. And again, oh, that sounds really great. Yeah, it's not a religion. There's no rules or worship or anything like that. It's just a mindset practice. But you do transform significantly when you do, you're connected to source all the time. It's, it's, you're always up. And then when vibrational flow takes you down and you feel a little disconnected, you actually understand and appreciate the downflow and you move through it. And ultimately you learn not to have the step one reaction. You're no longer fearing obstacles. And when you stay, you know, we've been, we've been habitually taught to fear all of our obstacles, yet we always have them anyway. Right. So <laughs> they're going to be there regardless. Right. You know, the tax bill is going to come. The, you know, all of that stuff's going to happen in, in life. And when we fear it, we're just holding ourselves away from joy. And when we learn to stop fearing it and start appreciating it, the tax bill is going to come, which means that I'm making money to pay taxes. And that's fantastic. Uh, you know, I'm going to get older. That's part of my life journey. I'm going to lose my hair. I'm going to gain weight easier. I'm going to, 
you know, have aches and pains. All of this is just the life journey. And instead of fighting it and battling it, just appreciating wherever we are. And if you believe that you're an infinite being having, you know, infinite lifetimes, whether you have proof of that or not, that belief system actually serves you Absolutely. because it allows you to take the pressure off of this life. This well, and I've always, I've always believed that what you resist persists anyway. So anything that you're fearing, those obstacles coming, you're, you know, that that's only going to, that's only going to magnify the obstacle. And so it, to me, what you're doing is helping people to minimize it by appreciating it because it's not, it's not going to have as negative of an impact if you are appreciating it. It's not going to have any negative impact because it's how you're perceiving it is really what makes it positive or negative experience. So if you can appreciate it, then you're actually changing your experience and your perception of it. Exactly. We also, when we're, when we're judging, we dip into the vibration of need, which I think is, and you, you probably have some experience with this, the vibration of need to me is the number one reason people don't manifest the things they want the most. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Attached. Vibration of need. I, I yeah, think of yeah. it the as vibration being of need attached. Is, is answered with yes from the universe, like everything. Yes, you need it. Sure, mm-hmm. you need it. Yes, and you're going to keep needing it as long as you think you need it. You know, it's amazing to me how the things that I, I could care less about manifest so easily. And then when I get into thinking that I need something to happen, I know I'm just pushing it away. So the, to me, my intention, I used to be very intentional and I was fairly good at, at manifesting things that I intended. Now, my favorite thing is to step back and allow the universe to just knock my socks off, right? Just, just wow me. You know, I want to be happy. I want to be joyful. I want to have fun go, you know, yeah. and, and seeing what life, my life, since I left my job in 2017, where I was making mid six figures, I, I had a, you know, I lived in a very expensive place and drove an expensive car and had, you know, a lot of personal overhead. And I decided just to quit and to just trust the universe to take care of me. And here I am three years later, I, I, I'm just astounded at, at what I've been able to create without a paycheck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it is. It's pretty, I did that 22 years ago. <laughs> so yeah, I good can, for you. Good for you. I, I, can, I waited, I waited later, but again, it's my perfect path. So I shouldn't judge it, but yeah, I did. No, it. definitely not. Yeah, no, it's, it, and you know, it's interesting because um, what you're talking about, I sort of just refer to as that subtle energy. Like when you're really focusing hard and intending hard and putting an abundance of energy into something it's like it's chasing it away it's it's those those little subtle feelings that you get those subtle little hints that um you know you take quick action on them and they just sort of happen i don't know how to explain it exactly but that's the that's the energy for me that always manifests is when it's super, super subtle. It's almost like it just. Well, because when it's subtle, it's, it's a knowing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the stream calls it isness. When, mm. you, when you're in the isness of it, you, you know it. Uh, one of the examples they use that I love is you, you've probably heard. I, I know so many stories uh, of people who are trying to have a baby. Mm-hmm. And they try and try and try and try and try. And then they adopt a child. And as soon as they adopt a child, they get pregnant. There are so many mm-hmm, of those stories out mm-hmm, there. It's incredible yeah. it's because they stepped into the isness of having a child rather than the isness of we're trying to have a baby because the universe answers. Yes. You really want this baby. You're really trying really hard. You're doing all these things. You're rushing to these doctors and you're taking these shots and you're doing X, Y, Z and you're trying, 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 trying. Sometimes it works, of course, but not always because they're in the vibration of that need to get pregnant rather than the vibration of we have a child. And as soon as they adopt, they're then relaxed into the vibration of we have a child. Well, almost anything, I I can't imagine anything that wouldn't manifest if you just relax into the isness of it and then understand vibrational flow that when you have these big things that you want, I believe anything can manifest instantaneously but it doesn't necessarily serve us to manifest instantaneously. Just like a lot of people that win the lottery that have that instant manifestation of millions of dollars and it destroys their lives. 
yeah. because they weren't really ready for that big of a manifestation. Sometimes it makes more sense. The universal process of creation is, you know, we, we dream it up. It seems possible. We're excited about it. And then polarity is going to take our vibration down. We're going to revisit it. We're going to miss it. We're going to wonder where it is, why it's taking so long. How is it going to work? We start questioning it. And the universe says, you're right, it's not coming. And it sort of goes away. But if we push through that period, and by push through, I mean relax through that period of just, okay, this is, this is just downflow. Now I'm going to allow my vibration to go up. Then you get it. And I was watching a guy this morning, and it was, uh, I think it was on TikTok. And uh, I've kind of gotten into TikTok lately. <laughs> and he was teaching the process of creating. Uh, I got a lot of followers on TikTok that are really into this, believe it or not, on TikTok. Um, so he was talking about, you know, starting a business and you start up here, you know, with unreasonable expectations. You believe you can do anything. And then you get down here to, wow, this is harder than I thought. And then you get down here to what he was calling the valley of despair. Mm -hmm. And most people stop there and retreat back. The people mm -hmm. that go through the valley of despair go back up in vibration to allowing and success and he didn't realize he was talking about vibrational flow but he was a great example of vibrational flow everything in life flows like that a relationship you start out up here it's great you're looking for the good in someone the vibrational flow a little time goes by you go down and suddenly the vibration drops and you start seeing the flaws in someone you can stop and retreat and break up and end the relationship or you can appreciate the flaws as long as they're not you know too extreme and move through that period and go back up. And that's where healthy relationships come from. I totally agree. I've, I've lived that. <laughs> I've lived that process. Uh, I think my cat and I are breaking up. He was sitting behind me. <laughs> <laughs> he's in a downflow. So he's, just he's in a downflow. <laughs> so, um, so I've always been curious. So with the, um, the stream, the streaming tapping into the stream, how easy is it is for you to, you know, to tap into that and like, what kind of questions do, uh, you know, people ask you most often when, when you do that? Well, the way I tap into the stream is I always, uh, I, I, if I'm not already in a high vibrational flow, I will do the things that I know I need to do to get there before I would go on a show like this, which mm -hmm. I always do anyway. So I'm generally pretty high most of the time. So it's not that difficult to tap into that. And what I do is quiet my mind. I do a little breath work, set an intention for the stream to come in. If I'm on a show with an audience, or even on a tape, I'll invite the audience to uh, to do the same thing at the same time mm -hmm. uh, so that we're utilizing the dead air because it's not dead air. We're actually raising our vibration collectively, which has a lot of power. We're calling in source. Uh, everyone who does that in conjunction gets more out of the interaction, I believe, in, in doing that. And then they come in, they, they introduce themselves. They always say we are here. Uh, th there is a noticeable change in me when I do it. And then there is nothing that you can't ask them. Uh, mm. The only thing I ever say to a new audience is they are limited only to my intellect and vocabulary. So uh -huh. if you want to know how to perform surgery on someone, that's beyond my intellect. So we're not going to get into talk about how to do surgery. And we're not going to speak Mandarin <laughs> because I don't speak Mandarin. It is coming through me. So I have to be able to comprehend the question to get a response. But it, it's gotten to where it's instantaneous. In the very beginning, it wasn't so instantaneous. And now I've learned how to allow it to really allow, relax and allow it to flow in such a way that you can ask questions and receive answers. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Are you in a position to, to, to do that at this juncture on this recording or? Yeah, I can do that. Uh, I might need to take just a quick minute. Okay. That. Okay. And I don't even know what to ask you. I have questions circulating through my mind, but I'm not even sure if they're appropriate for this, you know. <laughs> Sorry, there's breath work involved and I get a little stuffed up. With That's the, okay. <laughs> We are here. Hmm. 
Okay. Um, so now I, I can ask any kind of question I want. You may ask us anything. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Let's, how much longer um, will we be dealing with um, coronavirus? Will things be, um, you know, improving on that soon? Or are things going to get worse before they get better? Or like, what are, what are your, um, where is this going? <laughs> it, it, it's important that you, that you first understand that while everything that has ever happened and everything that is ever going to happen is, is occurring simultaneously, the, the, the energetic realm does not operate in linear time as, as a physical realm such as planet Earth does. Everything is, is, is in flux. Everything is, is expanding and evolving and, and shifting forward and backward always and in this expansion is created by physicals reaction to what they have manifested this is true in, in your individual lives and, and this is true for humanity this is true for planet earth this is true for the entire universe so what is next is is creation what is next is new expansion what is next is very much going to be created by the collective consciousness of humanity we were asked about this way back when this was first discovered. What's going to happen next? There's this new pandemic. There's this COVID thing that has come along. What's going to happen with this? And, and, and we will never predict your future because your future collectively and individually is up to you where you go vibrationally because your vibrational alignment with what you want and allowing it to manifest creates expansion. That is why physical exists. That is why there are infinite versions of what's next from the complete destruction of humanity and your planet, which you are nowhere near in alignment with, to the, the, complete, uh, the, the complete cure and, and, and the complete reversal of all of it. Where you're, you're likely to land is going to be somewhere in between those things because it's all vibrational. What tends to occur in any circumstance, and, and you will see this throughout your recorded history, this thing that, that, that David was sharing regarding vibrational flow, the, 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 the pandemic springs up, mass fear occurs as a reaction, the vibration drops. The, 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 the fear is, is utilized as a, a tool of control and, and, and a tool of uh, attention-seeking entities, and that fear is stoked. And that fear goes on for so long until you, you simply tire of it. And in your tiring of it, you release yourselves from the collective fear. Polarity is naturally going to take the collective vibration back up. And the, the, the collective vibration increasing will ultimately create a solution for it and allow a solution for it. So th this is not something that you're never going to solve. Notice there's, there's nothing that you never solve. There are things that you detune and there are things that you learn to, to work within and, and there is always improvement offered on all topics, always. And this is no different than that. There will be a solving of it, but that creation of the solution is new creation via humanity. And, and, and the, that is the gift that you are offering to the universe and your powers of creation are the gift that the universe is offering to you. Wonderful. I have one more question. Thank you very much. It, can I ask one more question? So my next question just has to do with um, peace in the United States and, um, you know, and, and just wanting, you know, the, the, there's just been such a divide um, with, uh, you know, po political, um, you know, uh, People, you know, everybody, you know, kind of having different ideas on how to solve the, the country's problems and how to move forward. And um, do you how do you how do you see it for 2021? How do you you know, will this resolve itself? Will people start to get along? Will it, you know, um, you know, how do you how do you see that? The, 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 the nature of a physical environment is comprised of, 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 
of is strands of consciousness that, that you may identify as a soul, in, independent strands of consciousness that are all essentially expressions of, of source. But when you come into a physical environment, you, you acquire what in, in the case of humanity, we will refer to as a, 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 your humanity, your ego consciousness. And your ego consciousness serves to overshadow the, the infinite wisdom that you actually possess. And the overshadowing allows you to have a unique human experience that is a combination of, of what you have projected yourself into vibrationally, all that you have been, all that you are and other experiences and the circumstances that, that you are encountering and your human reaction to them. This ensures that you are going to have a unique one-off, in this case, human experience. And, and there is no right or wrong experience. And you're all on different paths and different journeys. And, and you see evidence of that all around you. This is why the, the idea of all coming together and agreeing and getting along is a flawed premise because it is not offering the contrast that actually creates the expansion. Certainly the, there is an ebb and flow to your perceived unity, if you will. And, and what is occurring on planet Earth, you are actually on planet Earth at, at, at a very exciting time, if you will, from a human perspective, because there is what you would call uh, perhaps a mass awakening happening. And this mass awakening that is occurring is, is driven by your technology. You are all coming together like humanity has never been able to do before and communicating with a common language like you have never communicated with before and finding commonality in those messages. And in your finding commonality in those messages, you are coming through a period of, of what we call society building and you're beginning to question it. You're questioning your religion, you're questioning your government, you're questioning your monarchy, you're even questioning your police force in some cases. And the questioning of these things is actually causing some fracturing of them, not the complete destruction of them, but certainly you are at the beginning of a reinvention of all of these tools of control. And, and, and your reinvention of them is your understanding that you do not need to give so much power to a government or religion or a culture or anything. You are coming to understand that you are the creators of your reality. And notice that your younger generations are more in tune with this than the older generations. This is because you're all born up to speed with the time in which you enter. So the younger people are born up to speed with the, the, the idea that they are the creator of their reality, that they do not necessarily have to get a traditional education and, and, and get married and have a traditional life. They can live where they want, do what they want, earn how they want, and have more freedom. That idea was not well serving to previous generations. Previous generations operated in their own vibration in their own time, and that served their expansion. But their expansion beget the expansion of the younger generation that is now understanding that government does not need so much power, that religion does not need so much power, that, that none of these institutions are, are, are as necessary on the same level that they once were. And that questioning is causing your ascension, causing you all to go inward ultimately where we guide you to your own inner guidance, to, to, to experience the things and see things from the highest perspective that's available to you. We, we are not guiding you to, to obey what we are offering. And we are certainly not looking to be worshiped or even revered. We are, we are offering some teachings that are rooted very much in universal law and, and guiding you all, those of you who are ready to a space where you are able to better utilize universal law in your human life experience for a more joyous, clearer experience. Understanding the nature of positive and negative and understanding that that polarity is always at play and in your, your, your politics uh, in, in your country that you were referring to, and this is not just in the United States, this is actually occurring all over your planet in different ways. This, this scattering to the corners and, and getting into extreme left or right night and day type of thinking is, is a reaction to the, this mass ascension. It's lower vibrational fear-based thought that you must assign yourself to a set of rules and stick to those and, and, and only support those, that there is no middle ground. But more and more of you are coming to see because of the, 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 the negative conditions created by this vast polarity that the middle is where it's at. 
The middle is where more joy is found, be, being appreciative of differing beliefs and, and, and being more open-minded about things and, and not being so polarized. You will see more and more humans, if you continue on the path vibrationally that you are on, move into this. This is yet another example of vibrational flow. The, the, the vibration in regard to your nation was very high uh, in regard to how everyone felt about the nation. Then polarity took that opinion down a bit. Then suddenly everyone scattered to a corner. And, and now that fracturing, that, that the, 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 the ill effects of, uh, of that polarization are becoming more apparent. And then in them becoming more apparent, you are, you are seeing some falling out of that and moving more to the center. So you will see more of that, but you're not going to see perfection but you will see a flow. There's an ebb and flow to all things. There is never going to be a thing in the universe that, that is going to just be an end. Everything is always morphing into something else. That is the, the nature of universal creation, that, there, that, that energy is always morphing into something different. There is no ending to anything, including that which you are. Got it. Wow. That's very, I, 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 I enjoyed hearing that moving more toward uh, the middle, um, you know, and uh, so thank you. Thank you very much for enlightening us and and giving us your um, your your perspective on that. I really appreciate that. Very good. Much love. That is all we have. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is, that was very interesting. Um, and um, I was a little disoriented when I come out of that, but yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, well, for for uh, getting back to power of your mind uh, for our listeners, uh, just want to give them a little bit of information on uh, where they can find you and uh, and what you're uh, working on right now. So you've you've written a book, uh, The Stream: Eternal Wisdom for Better Life, and they can find that on uh, all all the places or anywhere. Where... Definitely on Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, uh, but you know a Amazon's kind of the go-to for everybody. So I always just say Amazon, paperback and uh, ebook on Amazon. Cool. And, then we, and then also, uh, you are giving away um, a free guided meditation that people can get by just simply texting the word AWAKEN to 760-284-7665. And I love that you, that because people are listening to this, you know, they can just take out their phone and type AWAKEN um, in their text message and get this immediately. So that, that makes it so much easier. So thank yeah, you for it's that. Instant. And, and these days when we're bombarded with so much email, it's cool to have a, a text function to do that. And you get a few other little, you get an invitation to our Facebook group uh, and a couple of other little things with that. You can stop at any time and we don't share your number. We don't call you or anything like that. <laughs> so it's, the text. it's all automated. So you text your number. Yeah, text awaken to that number. And the meditation is really cool. Uh, it's called Source Connect. It's all channeled. Uh, it's backed with acoustic music by Christo Polani, who's a fantastic composer. Uh, his music alone will take you on a magical journey. But this meditation is all about giving you tools to connect with Source. It takes you on this magical journey of Source connection so that you make your own Source connection. So it's oh, a I very cool that. meditation. That's the, everybody that gets it really loves it. So I hope everybody loves it. Yeah, well, I'm going to get myself a copy of that. So hopefully our listeners will also take advantage of, of that. And um, and then just for more information, they can just go to your website, thestreamofdavid.com. And you also have your podcast. How often do you uh, do your podcast? And is it just you or do you do guests or how do you? Uh, I do podcast? right now. It's a, it's a radio show uh, that we convert to a podcast uh, and it's once a week. Uh, mm -hmm. Moving into the new year, we're going to uh, we're going to evolve the format a little bit, uh, and it's going to be a lot more channeling. Uh, but I do have guests right now. I have a lot of guests from the Taya community. Uh, we have such a big tent now in the Taya community of people that have different businesses and different things like that. So the guests will come on and share their wisdom with what they do specifically, and then how they woven Taya into that. So it's a good place to learn about Taya and the streams teachings. Sometimes there's channeling on there. Uh, and then I channel uh, on my YouTube channel every Wednesday live at 4 p.m. Pacific is live channeling uh, a whole hour of what you just sampled, uh, however long that was. I know it was pretty quick. 
right there of, of that, of people asking questions. And uh, the questions are fantastic because the, the, that's new information from the stream. When people come on and ask you know, any question, there's always some new thought offered in, in answering that question. So it's, it's great to have you know, different people come on and answer, ask questions. Well, thank you. Well, I really appreciate you being willing to be a channel to allow people to ask these these questions and and, um, you know, and, and just because I know it takes a lot of energy uh, to get into that um, receiving mode to to listen. And so I just really want to uh, tell you, you know, I really appreciate your your work in this. And um, so people will be able to find out more information um, by going into the show notes. I'll be able to find your YouTube channel where you do your live streams every Wednesday. And um, I just uh, recommend people tune in. This is really interesting work and you can learn a lot. You can learn a lot about yourself. You can grow yourself. And um, any last final words to kind of close things things out today. I've really, really appreciated you being on the show and I've learned a lot. It's been really interesting and enlightening. So I uh, just want to thank you. Any final thoughts? Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. I always love meeting new people and sharing the stream's message. And hopefully it resonated with a lot of your audience. There, there's a lot of, uh, just a lot of good stuff offered there. That's, you know, void of judgment and rules and things like that. It just gives people a lot of tools to, to, to navigate their lives in a more positive way. And that's what I'm all about. So thank you, Victoria. I appreciate it. And thank you, David. Thank you for being on the Power of Your Mind podcast. And thank you, listeners, for also tuning in and watching and listening to the Power of Your Mind podcast. And we will see you next week.